after three months, two months maybe, I'm back with a small short video. To be honest, it will be two videos today. Um, it is an, another thing I ordered from Banggood a while ago. Yeah, I'm buying too much of stuff I really don't need, but I like it. I like to play around with it and think what can I change or what can I do with it. This is the Pocket Digital Ultra Kleines Oscilloscope. Yeah, the German translation is terrible. One Mac Buntbreite. It's not bunt, it's bunt. It's, no, it's wrong. Five Mac Sample Rate und Hundheld Oscilloscope Satz. Hundheld, Hund is a dog. I don't know why it translates to dog, because the English name is Handheld. So yeah, they are not very good in translation things. It is still in sale. Um, I also pay about $25 for it. Now it's $23. Um, it is very small and it's much, yeah, the specs are better than the JTAG, you know, or almost everyone knows the JTAG gel. Um, this is the one I modified with the built-in battery and the LEDs for trigger and charging. We will check it against this later. Um, just scroll down to the, oh, maybe you can read, the, the German translation is yeah, funny. Um, it is called FNIRSI DSO-188. Ist ein extrem kleines digital Oszilloskop mit einer Abtastrate von 5 Millisekunden Sekunden. It's Mac samples. Und einer Bandbreite von 1 MHz, 1 MHz. Das für die Elektronik, Enthusiasten und Wartungstechniker, Wartungstechniker, mm -hmm, um, Engineer, no, no, never, von Schaltkreisen entwickelt wurde. One Mac Bandbreite, um, Sample Rate, <laughs> not Sample Rate, um, Bandwidth, kann für einen Verstärker oszillieren, automatisch Steuerung, diese, diese Wechsel, bla, bla, bla. It's, yeah, German just translation. Um, I don't know the Speicherkomprimierungstechnology, Memory Compression. Yeah. Refresh. Bildschirm flackert nicht. Oh, the screen isn't flickering. Yeah, okay. We will see. Um, it say again, if you use a 10 times probe, you can measure 40 to 800 volt. I would never put more than uh, low voltage from your DC DC or AC DC converter to it. Never. I uh, won't play around with line voltage with it. Um, yeah, some pictures of it. I think it's a little bit too bright, but yeah, it's just a while no video. So tr just trying it. It comes with all the necessary parts. And now we go to the box. The smartphone can go. Yeah, it's not an Apple at the moment. I'm trying out Android. So first surprise was it comes in a box. Uh, I never see boxes from this Chinese things. Uh, wait, let me go back a little bit. So first surprise it it was it was it comes in a box. So whoa, did I learn to send? So inside the box we find a um, little manual. We won't read it yet. We don't need. We find two pouches. I already opened it, so I know what's inside. One of the pouch has the really little oscilloscope thing. Yeah, and it comes with a built-in battery. So this is the small little oscilloscope. Then we have an accessory bag, and the table is a little bit messy. Oh, it clues very well together again. Inside we find an adapter for the small BNC or for the small plug at the side. We found a USB cable. Oh, I already checked, it doesn't transfer any data. It's really just for charging. Cable doesn't feel so bad. We don't need it yet. And yeah, the usual banana plug to BNC for probing. And it's just stay there. Oh wait, uh, before we turn it on, we take it apart, uh, like today it's like EV block, so just take it apart and have a look inside. Um, I already prepared a backside, so only one screw to remove. The backside and the front side are small PCBs, so very um, cheap construction, but not bad. So we find the lithium battery 3.7 volt yeah that is what we expected accepted 
expected. And 350 milliamp hours, somewhere in the manual it says about one or two hours runtime with one charge and it is charged by the micro USB. So underneath the battery we found all the chips and because they are very difficult to read in the camera, I just checked them out before. In the middle the we have the brain of it. It is an ARM processor, uh, it's a GD32F103. It's a Chinese company called Giga Device. I never hear about them before, but yeah, it works. So it is an Cortex ARM M3, or an ARM, not Cortex, it's an ARM M3 with 108 megahertz or up to 108 megahertz. And it has a built-in 3 times 12 bit ADC, so yeah, not bad. Um, the chip next to it, this one, is in 74HC4051, an 8 channel analog multiplexer. So I think they make the input um, the front end. No, it's not really a front end. But it goes from 0 or from 50 milliwatt, something like this, up to 40 volt with the one times probe and I see some resistors here and I guess they do it with this components they built the front end something with the analog multiplexer. I could not find any information about the LE19356T. Um, the best fitting part but I'm not sure why they use it here it's an analog optocoupler um, so I have no idea. Uh, we have some SMD switches and the quartz, the thing that generate the clock. Oh my gosh, my English, it's a little bit rusty at the moment. And the power switch, a transistor, and maybe these are two MOSFETs, I'm not sure. So for the battery, or the battery protection, but the battery has protection itself. So I won't go and remove the front panel, um, nothing underneath just the standard small display. So nothing more to say about it. It's a very cheap construction, but as I said before, it works. So go ahead with part number three. Um, we try it out. Setup on the table is done. So welcome to part three of this video, the little play around with this. I don't want to go too deep in the details. I just want to compare it with the DSO gel one of my most favorite oscilloscope kits from Banggood. Um, this is my unit. I heavily, how to say, modified it with the built-in battery, the built-in charger, and it um, has more LEDs outside, like the trigger LED, the charging LEDs, but the rest is stock. So it has 300 kilohertz analog bandwidth. I forget the sampling rate. And then on this side, we have the DSO-188 from Daniu, what says on the package and when you switch it on, by the way, you see it start very fast. It shows FNR, F-N-E-R-S-I, I don't really don't know. But this company, I didn't check it out. So doesn't matter, I bought it from Banggood. And the Juntech JDS 2800, I get as a gift from Comtop. Oh, as a review unit, of course. And the review is in another video. So, um, all three start up. I have 10 kilohertz at 5 volt. So, what does it show? Um, yeah, it just shows the sine wave. This one always go back to the 5 volt per division and 20 microseconds to change. You have buttons on this up here um, and for timing over the time. So, go to 550 microseconds at 2 volt per division. The readout here, I check it, is not very precise, so we won't bother with it. Um, there is a way to switch it off. <laughs> I forgot. Ah, okay, I like it better like this. With mode, you can change the beha behavior of the um, left, right, up, down button, so you can move around the uh, waveform, and if you press pause, you can also move it. So, but I go back to the where you can change the time base and the walls per division. So at 10 kilohertz, both oscilloscope, both pocket things, toys, shows a nice sine wave. Um, getting a little bit more serious with the frequency. Let's go up, go up to, uh, New Zealand is not best, 
let's get up to 100 kilohertz the jtag yeah it shows i mean i think i can go in a little bit more yeah 10 microsecond is the best uh, this can do here something auto um yeah just check the trigger point this is something different on the jtag you can change the trigger point you can change the trigger position i didn't find it here i checked the manual so here you can only change the time base and you can ch uh, change if it should trigger on the raise rising or on the falling edge so you have the key uh, not auto <laughs> Yes, here on the mode button, and I think it was run stop. Not very intuitive. So, uh, it's there. Okay. Oh, let's bring the A form down again. And the, the user interface is not the best. But you see, I can go to two microseconds here. So, I can still isolate about one period here this is the uh, shortest time base it have it is 10 microseconds so we go up to 200 kilohertz the jtag already starting to have problems to show this it's not anymore a sine wave it's something something and the these are 188 doesn't it still show it nice let's go up to the maximum the dso 138 can do uh one megahertz Oh, funny, the JTAG shows a sine wave, but this is not one megahertz. So in this range of frequencies, the JTAG is not very trusty. Here you see, still see something and the readout is running about one megahertz. So not too bad, but also not useful. So I think, in my opinion, for the DSO 188, 300 kilohertz is the maximum you can see and you can um, interpret the waveform you see and on the JTAG 100 kilo sorry 100 kilohertz even lower is better so but it's still useful for audio frequency or just checking if there's a signal just change the waveform to show how both showing um, square waves at 100 kilohertz the jtag has problems with it showing something like a sign and on the dso 188 you still have a square wave let's see what both are doing at higher frequencies the scale wave going up to 500 the jtag now has very bad time the dso 198 also have problems to show it proper you maybe it's a square wave maybe it's something else so going back to something both are making good oh this way good 100 kilohertz and uh, with nothing at about 20 kilohertz you can see the it's a square wave and here we can i don't want to move around it i want to change the time base to uh, 20 microseconds so not bad this spikes here I can little compensate a little bit with the trimmers inside but I don't mess with it now um, here it's yeah it's fine at 20 kilohertz it's going down to 10 yeah very nice so that is what both can do from the display part also it doesn't flicker here the DSO 198 is very nice it has a very nice size and already the battery built in oh i like batteries built in device um i should zoom a little bit in for you and just change the frequency go through the waveform first showing you the sine wave on it with um go back to the 100 kilohertz and do, do, do. shows very nice and 200 you see also the voltage or the peak point it doesn't go down it has problems to show proper signal at 700 kilohertz but 
it doesn't change the height of the waveform so okay now it doesn't trigger it's 100 kilohertz and the readout is also precise enough so the DSO 188 a very nice little pocket really pocket maybe I should make a keyring for our mid um, oscilloscope thanks for watching and see you next time and the next video is all about this part I get out of my 3d printer I designed a case for it like this and also we'll add a screen protection because I really want to use it as a daily carriage.